Hello friends, welcome to my channel Eccentric Learning. I hope you have gone through my previous videos on various quantitative aptitude topics like percentages, profit and loss, averages, mixtures and allegation and so on. If not, some of the videos link has been given in the description box, please go through it. Also, if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. Today, we are going to start a new topic, time in work. I have divided this topic into two parts. In the first part, we'll be learning the concepts of time and work. And in the second part, we'll be doing some word problems based on these concepts. So let us start with the first part today. Basically, there are two scenarios we will come across whenever we'll be doing time and work chapter. The first is when people are working with different efficiencies to complete a work. And the second is when people are working with same efficiency to complete the work. So, before starting, let us first see what is efficiency. Efficiency can be simply defined as the work done per unit time. For example, say a man can type, say, 36 pages in two hours. So what is the efficiency of that man? So efficiency would be simply given by work done. So here, the work done is 36 pages and the time taken is two hours. So this would be two. So 36 by two, that would be 18. So that means the efficiency of this man is 18 page per hour. That is every hour, this man can type 18 pages. So efficiency is simply work done per unit time. Okay, so now let us see how we can solve sums when people are working with different efficiency. Suppose a person A can complete a piece of work in say 20 days and the person B can complete the same work in say 60 days. Now, if A and B work together, so in how many days they can complete this same work? This kind of problems can be solved simply by using the unitary method or by using the LCM method. So let us first see the unitary method. So here A can complete the whole work in 20 days working alone. B can complete the whole work in 60 days working alone. So in one day, A can complete one by 20 of the work, or we can say that the efficiency of A is simply one by 20. In a similar way, if I say that in one day, what would be the efficiency of B? This would be one by 60. So if A and B work together, so in one day they can do, or the efficiency of A and B would be simply one by 20 plus one by 60, which if we solve it, this would be coming as four by 60 or one by 15. So that means in one day, A and B together can complete one by 15 of the work, or we can say that the efficiency of A and B working together is one by 15. So we can say that A and B can complete this piece of work in 15 days. So that means if A is working independently, he can complete the work in 20 days. And if B is working independently, he can complete the work in 60 days. But if A and B works together, in that case, they can complete the same piece of work in 15 days. Now, let us see the LCM method to solve the same problem. So in LCM method, whatever the number we have, we take the LCM of that numbers to assume the total work. Here, the LCM of 20 and 60 would be 60. So let us assume that the total work is 60 units. So that means in 20 days, A can complete this 60 unit of work. So in one day, A would be able to complete 60 upon 20, that is three units of work. In a similar way, in one day, B would be able to complete 60 by 60, that is one unit of work. So in one day, A and B together can do three plus one, that is four unit of work. So the total work is 60 unit. 
and in one day a and b can do four unit of work so we can say that the number of days required by a and b to complete the same work could be simply 60 upon 4 that is 15 days so this is how we can use the lcm method to solve the same problem instead of taking this 60 unit which is the lcm of the numbers 20 and 60 we could have assumed some another number as well as the total unit of work but in that case the numbers won't be easy and the calculation may become difficult so that's why it's always better to take the lcm of the numbers so that the calculation becomes very easy now the same approach can also be applied to the pipes and tank problems so let us see how we can use the same approach here suppose if i have a tank to which there are two inlet pipes i1 and i2 the inlet pipe i1 can fill this tank completely in say 20 hours and the inlet pipe 2 can fill this tank completely in say 60 hours i need to find if both these inlet pipes are open in how much time will they fill the tank completely so again here we can use the unitary method and we can also use the lcm method so let us try to see the lcm method here so again if you see here the numbers are 20 and 60 so the lcm of 20 and 60 would be again 60 so let us assume that the total capacity of the tank is say 60 unit so that means in 20 hours this inlet pipe i1 can fill this 60 unit of tank and in 60 hours this inlet pipe i2 can fill this 60 unit of tank so in a similar way in one hour the inlet pipe i1 can fill 60 by 20 that is 3 unit of the tank and in one hour the inlet pipe i2 can fill 60 upon 60 that is 1 unit of the tank so if both these inlet pipes are open in that case they would be filling 3 plus 1 that is 4 unit of the tank so to fill this 60 unit the time taken would be simply 60 by 4 that is 15 hours so we can see how the same approach can be applied to the pipes and tank problem just one thing we need to be careful about instead of this inlet pipe if there would have been an outlet pipe in that case instead of adding this units we need to subtract those units for example say this inlet pipe 2 is not the inlet pipe but say the outlet pipe that is o1 so that means this pipe is draining the tank that is taking out water from the tank so in that case in one hour this outlet pipe o1 would be draining out 60 by 60 that is one unit of the tank so together the inlet pipe i1 and the outlet pipe o1 would be filling up 3 minus 1 that is 2 unit of the tank per hour so to fill this 60 unit the total time taken by these two pipes would be simply 60 by 2 that is 30 hours so this is the only thing that we need to be careful about that in case of outlet pipe we need to use the minus sign rest all the things will remain the same okay so now let us see how we can approach if people are working with the same efficiency suppose there are 20 men who can complete a piece of work say in 30 days now there are 40 men so in how many days will this work gets completed assuming that all these men are working with the same efficiency such kind of problems can be solved simply by using the concept of variation. So here there are number of men and the number of days. So we know that if the number of people are more in that case, the number of days required to complete the piece of work would be less. So we can say that the number of days D and the number of men would be inversely related. So simply by using the concept of variation, we can say that d2 by d1 would be equal to m1 by m2 so d2 would be equal to d1 times of m1 upon m2 so this is our d2 this is our d1 this is m1 and this is m2 
So if we simply use the values, this would be 30 times of 20 upon 40. So if you solve this out, this would be 15 days. That means if there are 40 men, then the number of days required to complete the same piece of work would be 15. Now say if we add one more parameter, that is the number of hours, say H. Suppose this 20 men can complete a piece of work in 30 days, say working 10 hours every day. Now there are 40 men. In how many days will this work gets completed if this 40 men works for say 5 hours every day? So we can apply the same concept of variation here. I know that the number of days would be related inversely to the number of people that is the number of men here. And we can also say that the number of days would be related inversely to the number of hours as if people are working for more number of hours. In that case, the work would be completed in less number of days. So if we simply apply the concept of mixed variation here, we can say that the number of days D would be inversely related to MH. So we can say that D2 by D1 would be equal to M1 upon M2 times of H1 upon H2. So D2 can be written as D1 times of M1 by M2 times of H1 by H2. Now, simply if we use the values, this would be 30 times of 20 upon 40 times of 10 upon 5. So if you solve this out, this would be 30 days. That is, if the number of men gets doubled and if the number of time reduced to half, in that case, the number of days required to complete the same piece of work will remain the same. Now, I can add some more variables like efficiency, work, etc. And we can apply the same approach to find the number of days. But every time we need to frame this mixed variation to find the number of days. So instead of doing this, we can apply one shorter way to reach to the final answer. So instead of writing all this, we can simply write the variables that we need to find. In this case, I need to find the number of days. So let us assume it to be D. Now, this number of days initially was 30. So I need to write 30 here. Now, this 30 would be less or more depending on the other variables. That is the number of men who are working, the number of hours for which they are working and so on. So we need to simply check whether this number of days initially could be lesser or more depending on the other variables. So in this particular case, I know that the number of men has increased from 20 to 40. So when the number of men gets increased, I know that the number of days would be reduced. So I need to multiply with a ratio which would be less than one. So in this case, this would be 20 upon 40. In a similar way, the initial number of hours for which this men were working were 10 hours and now they're working for five hours. I know that the number of hours has reduced so the number of days required to complete the work would be more. So this 30 has to be multiplied with a ratio, which would be more than one. That case, I need to multiply it with 10 upon five. So finally, if you calculate, this would be 30. So that means every time we don't have to write this and we can directly use the shorter way to find the final answer. Now suppose, if I add one more parameter, say the percentage of work that has been finished by this many men. Suppose when 20 men are working for 30 days for 10 hours every day and they were able to complete say 50% of the work. Now there are 40 men and these 40 men are working for 5 hours every day and they need to complete say 80% of the total work. Now what would be the number of days required? So instead of doing all this, we can directly use this shorter way. So the number of days would be same as 30 times of 20 upon 40 times of 10 upon 5. Now, since there is an additional parameter that is a percentage of work that has to be finished. So we need to think whether this number of days would be more or less depending on this percentage of work. Percentage of work that has to be complete is 80. So we need to multiply with a ratio which is more than one. So this would be 
80 upon 50. So if you calculate this, this would be simply 40 80s. So we can see how we can apply this approach to n number of variables to reach to the answers in a very efficient way. So in this video, we have seen the concepts of time and work and what kind of problems we can expect in this chapter. So I hope you have learned something in today's video, but if you have any confusion, you can watch the video again. And still, if you have any doubts, you can put it in the comment box. I will try to answer each one of your queries. So if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. I'll see you all in my next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and keep growing. Thank you.